So ladies and gentlemen, are you into AI? Are you thinking of getting into AI? Have you heard of different terms like AI, ChatGPT, LLM and all this? And you are thinking, oh, what the heck is going on in this world? <laughs> Will I lose my job? Will AI take away my job? Or how can I get started with AI? What are some of the fundamental concepts that I need to know about AI? Well, if you are thinking in those lines, then you are in the right place because today I have a very special guest. Welcome to the exotic podcast because today we have Mr. Amit Sharma with us. He is a very good friend of mine. Uh, we both studied in the same college, in the same section, in the same room at SRM University Software Engineering 2010 to 2014. And he is a very big expert in AI. You can see his portfolio like he is currently an associate architect at Value Labs. And uh, yeah, he's a Gen AI enthusiast and he also has his blog and newsletter at Reading Pills. I'll share all the links down in the description section. And today I have asked him many questions, around 10 questions, if I'm correct, um, about AI. And if you are a person who has just heard of AI terms and you are really eager to know what AI is and how to use, you know, AI, uh, how to not get overwhelmed. All right. So then you are in the right place. Enjoy the podcast and don't forget to share this video with somebody who is not from computer science, but wants to know about AI and don't forget to give him a follow and uh, visit his LinkedIn and his Facebook page. All right. Thank you so much. Please hear this video and let us know down in the comments what else would you love Amitji to share and without further delay I will start with the podcast all right have a great time hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to the exotic podcast I'm very excited to have my friend Amitji today we are friends from SRM University software engineering department we did our bachelor's there from 2010 to 2014 in software engineering and today he will enlighten us about AI, generative AI, chat GPT, LLM and so many other things. So welcome to Exotic Astrology Amiji and please tell us what is this buzzword called generative AI? Why should a normal person be aware of this? How can you explain this to a 5 year old or maybe a 10 year old? <laughs> and how can a person who has no idea of what Gen AI is or maybe is not from computer background, how can that person understand? And we have a lot of questions. Uh, I have a lot of questions for you. So uh, this is the first one. What is Gen AI? Please enlighten us. The stage is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much, Baba Jiji, for having me on the show. And uh, let's get started with generative AI. So... I will be using very simple terms so that everyone in your audience can understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. So let's start with what is generative AI. So generative AI is a mix of two terminologies here. Okay. The first is generative and the second is artificial intelligence. Yeah. So generative means like it can generate new content like text, images, code, videos, graphics, all right. And then artificial intelligence to do to generate automatically without having it to uh, manually do it okay, with the help of a program that constitutes generative AI generates new content automatically okay okay but but let's see the history also it's not like it is a new concept or a new technology which has come up recently we have been using generative AI for a very long time and you might not be knowing it but you are using it let me make you realize that. So have you used Google Translate in your life? For sure. <laughs> what is an example of a generative AI? Okay. So for the iPhone lovers, it is Siri. Right? Okay. You can talk to Siri. Siri talks to you. Yeah. yeah. It right. can also take actions on your behalf. It can set alarm for you. It can call your friend. Right? For Android users, it is Google Assistant. Mm -hmm. That's also of generative AI 
So, and also one very, very common example, I think, which almost everyone has used is Google search. So when you start typing something, it gives you suggestions. Oh, yes, yes. And sometimes it predicts very accurately that what we're trying to ask. You don't even type the whole sentence. You just select, it enter, you get the search results. Correct, correct, correct. So these all are examples of generative AI and you have been using them for very long. Mm. So now, uh, as you have talked about this Gen AI, what I have seen is we, we have been using this, but we are not actually aware of this fancy term. But something changed in December of 2022. I remember I was in India in Pune and the first time that there I saw this, you know, fancy thing called as chat GPT. So what happened that suddenly after December 2022, every, every normal person came to know about it and they started using it. So, so what was that trigger because of which this blast happened? So we humans are the most intelligent creature on uh, on this universe, right? Mm -hmm. So to impress uh, out to impress us, it it takes a great deal, right? Uh, so uh, uh, we have uh, been using generative AI for very long. Uh, okay. We got very much impressed by that technology, right? Okay, yeah. Uh, Google Translate, fine. It translates uh, from one language to another. That's okay. But okay. that was not a threat to us. Did not seem like a threat to us. But with the launch of Chat GPT in the late 2022, many of the smart people were convinced that something revolutionary has been created. Because now you are looking at a system which can generate text like humans. Yes. Or sounds like human. It can take various types of exams and pass as well, right? The famous example is when it was taken to US, it cleared the bar exam. Yes, yes. It can solve your mathematical problems. You just click the picture, show the problem, and it will give you the solution. Ah, okay, okay. This There was a lot of work which was going on to build this for a long time, basically. Correct, correct. So uh, it had this work has been uh, there for almost years, almost decades. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yes. So let me tell you more about that. But before that, uh, there is one more example which will intrigue you. It can read 1,000 pages of document instantly yeah. and it will answer whatever is your query. Yes, yes. Right? See, it's almost logical. But the thing is that in childhood, if you remember, when our exams were there, we used to think like, uh, wish there was a barcode and we could memorize this whole book just oh. once. Um, yes, yes, yes. That's a reality, not for you, but for the AI. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you can you can take help of AI in doing that. Okay, and how does this uh, chat GPT actually work? You know, so can you give some background about this open AI also, you know, some like Sam Altman and why he was the one who did this and actually how does this work basically? I will come to that, Babaji, but to your last question, like they have been uh, preparing for this for a decade, almost a decade. Okay. So that's, but the reason they were not able to make a breakthrough is that because there were uh, almost, I would say, two major ingredients which were missing. Okay. First one was, if you see, we have started generating a lot of data almost after 2000s, okay? Or I will say late 2000s or 2010, I would say. Right with the advent of social media, yeah. and we were, it's like we started to talk data is the new oil. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So earlier, so much data was not available. That was one uh, restriction. Okay. Second, around 2017, there was a new concept called attention is all you need. I will not go into technicalities, but you need to understand is that it was not possible earlier to remember the the context in which we are talking. So it was like uh, very forgettable. The The model was very forgettable. It oh. could not, uh, it could not remember what you said earlier. Okay. So with the technological advancement, we reached this stage and chat GPT is an example of that. Okay. okay. Now, how, how this works. So these, these models are called language models. All oh, right. Okay. These are called language models and these are very huge. So these are called large language models. 
Oh, LLM basically. Okay. LLM. Yes, exactly. The terminology is LLM, which we correct. use in our day to day. Correct, correct. So all of these large language models like ChatGPT, Claude, Gemini from Google, how these work is, these work on the principle of something known as language modeling. Okay. What is a language modeling? Before that, you should know what is a language model. Yeah. Well, language model is a type of AI, okay, where, where you train a, where you train a machine to understand human language and generate human-like text. Okay. This is also known as in technology as natural language processing, NLP. Yeah, yeah. Correct. So how it how the language modeling works is, for example, consider you have a sentence. I want to. Okay. I know what is the answer, but I will hide it from the machine. Okay. So I will, I will show the machine. I want to, and then machine will try to predict. I want to play. I want to dance. I want to sing. I want to eat. Okay. So it tries to predict, given a sequence of words, given a sequence, given a sentence, what comes next? And this is just one example. Ah, okay. Now consider a machine, a system, which has seen so much data. Let me... Let me make you imagine how much data. Whatever data which is available publicly on the internet. Yeah. So it has seen all of that text. Mm. It has gone through that and has been trained. Yeah. If a human wants to read that much data, it will take you multiple lifetimes. You cannot read that much data. Correct, correct. Not possible. So by this, you know how intelligent this system has become. Hmm. And and you can know this because when ChatGPT was launched, it took it less than two months to reach hundred million users. Yes, yes, brilliant. Well, awesome. Let's compare it to let's compare it to other apps. Yeah. Instagram, it took almost thirty months. Okay. Translate, it took almost seventy eight months. Wow. For TikTok, I think it took almost nine months to reach hundred million users. Okay, so this is only in two months. Correct, correct. And uh, when you are talking of chat GPT and LLM, we always hear, you know, there's this fancy thing called parameters, you know, like they are trained on billions and, you know, now the new GPT-5 or something will be trained in trillions. So what exactly is this fancy word called parameter? And it sounds very daunting in the initial, like billions of parameters. So it's like, Okay, maybe a human can never do it. So what exactly is this parameter? So the tech industry is very famous to, you know, give you a jargon which you can't understand. <laughs> so parameters are nothing. These are kind of knobs and dials you might have seen on your radio to tune it, to make the volume high. So what you are doing in that act is you are adjusting, right? So mm. these parameters are nothing. But the adjustments for your language model, which makes it perform okay. better. Okay. Okay. But but your question is why billion parameters? Why we need so many parameters? Mm. Yeah. Because human language is very complex. Ah, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Correct. So we have we have uh, different nuances, idioms, sarcasm, thousands of different languages to say one thing. Correct. Correct. And and to say one thing in various different ways. Okay. okay. And the so more the parameters, better the answers will be from these models. So each of these parameters hold a small piece of information. Okay. So now and mm -hmm. so now suppose somebody is ask about to ask you know I want to somewhere so. Somewhere, something, I want to dance, I want to sing, or whatever. So, when you say billion parameters, it is including all of this, not just in every every stage. It is including all this. Correct, correct. So, when it, when it gets trained on text, it tries to predict what comes next. And it has seen so much text, so much dialects, so much idioms, so much nuances. So, it has to keep track of that because it's not like one size fits all. Yeah, I mean, this is very interesting what you just said about natural language processing. 
because uh, instinct like it was a big surprise for me because when I was in my masters, I did my master thesis on NLP, natural language processing. So my thesis, the job was suppose you upload a PDF file. In the PDF, you know, it could be any PDF. It does not have to be scientific. Any PDF you upload. So suppose there is a there is a paragraph which says uh, Barack Obama came here or you know Narendra Modi came here or President Donald Trump came here. Some something this happened, that happened, or maybe there's a place uh, like London, okay, or maybe there is New Delhi or Mumbai or something like that. So from the text file which I upload, we have to uh, my job was to find out names of human beings and locations and once you find them then suppose you find a name like john smith in the text so then you know this is john smith so this is a real world some human entity this is not just some word but then the next task which i had was okay this is some random tom dick harry called john smith but who is this john smith I mean, we know he's a human, he's a parcel, but who is this John Smith? Because if you go to Wikipedia, you will find around 900 articles for John Smith. That was in 2017. I don't know how many articles are there now. And even if you say it's the same. So that means there are thousand influential personalities in this world who have lived in documented history called John Smith. So then how do you know which John Smith it is? So then what it is, what I did was like, for every entry for this John Smith, I would go to Wikipedia. And if you go to Wikipedia for any name or any place, you will have a summary first. No? Then you have all the detailed description. So uh, what I will do is I will come, I will collect the summary of all these thousand articles, which has John Smith. And then I will compare using cosine similarity with the document which was uploaded where there was John Smith. Like for example, if they write about President Trump, they will write, you know, USA or President or something like this. So in the summary, it will be their President. So among those thousand articles, whichever has the highest similarity, cosine similarity, uh, then we say, okay, that that is this, this John Smith in this PDF is this particular John Smith, okay? Like, you know, there, there are a lot of Londons in this world. We know of only one London, but there are more than one place, uh, one place which are called as London. So, yeah, that's how it is. So, and that time when I did this, uh, after completing and after, you know, I got my degree, I was wondering, well, why the hell did I do this? This is my application. <laughs> <laughs> you know, with that, let me, let me tell you an example related to uh, that. Consider this sentence. The teacher uh, was teaching using the book. Okay. Okay. Now, as humans, there are multiple uh, multiple meanings from this sentence. The students were you, the students did open the book and they were studying from the book, or the teacher was using the book. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Okay. So, when sometimes human language is so complex, it is even difficult for us to make sense of it. Okay. Correct. 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 Now you want the machine to understand that context. So then uh, one another question that comes to my mind is that now we have this, you know, open AI, chat, GPT, all these big players in the market. Microsoft has also gone into it, of course. So Google is there and, you know, so. But in future, do you think these players will be all in all or, you know, do you think there will be something else which will come? So for everyday persons, what do you think what will happen? I think you are heading towards the power lies with the big players only. So okay. I think that that will not be the case. That's how I think. Because if you remember the old era where the mainframe computers were introduced, right? it, it occupied almost a room size and took many people to punch the cards and, you know, operate these computers. And people thought that that's it. There will be hardly a handful of these machines. Uh, and the industries which need to churn the numbers. And mostly those were with governments because these were very expensive, hard to yeah. afford. Yes. But with time, the machine started to shrink, the technology grew. Right? We had smaller size of chips available. Then the mid-size computers came. Then the banking and insurance companies started to use them. Right? And then eventually, uh, we are using them today. Right? 
Mm. Now that computer has become so small that we are carrying them in our pockets. Mm. Almost has reached all the home. Correct, correct, correct. That's one aspect. But uh, like with time it happens. And the thing is that, so along with models also, you don't need so big models per, to perform each task, right? Yeah. Just like computers has different versions. Like if, if there is a computer user who just want to serve internet and use a little bit of Microsoft Word, he will most probably buy a i3 laptop with 4 GB or 8 GB RAM. Yes. But someone who needs to do a graphic design or wants to play a lot of uh, high computational games, he will buy a i7 laptop or a MacBook Pro. Uh, like, you know, it, it turns on the capacity. How, what is your purpose? Right? Right. Similarly, you don't need chat GPT for every task. You need so much big model. Right? Similarly, just like computers, there will be smaller models which will be available for humans. Okay. Achha. Okay. Got it. So when the, when there is a model which comes for your phone, right? It won't be that big model. It will be a smaller model. Okay. And it will be trained to do a specific task, but it will do very well. Okay. And now as you are speaking of this, you know, so ultimately it all depends on one thing. Like, you know, if a normal person who has no idea of AI and does not have to have any idea, just needs to use it. So then they have to write some prompts, right? They have to ask some questions. So what, what exactly is this prompting and what is the science behind this and how does it help the model basically? So let me start again. Again, it's a jargon. Okay. So prompt is nothing. Okay. Prompt is simply what, what you type your question to chat GPT. That is a prompt. Okay. So basically your question is a prompt. Now let's understand why do we need prompt and why there has been a specific area called prompt engineering itself. Okay. So thing is that these large language models like chat GPT has been trained on massive data set, right? Which is available on internet, right? That means you have access to good data, bad data and average data. Most of the data which is available on internet is average data. Oh, I see. Okay. Correct. And there are few quality pieces also. Right. Yeah. But these model consumed everything. Okay. I see. Right. Yeah. So prompting, the prompting, the technique, how you ask better questions is the secret sauce to bring that hidden deep down quality data to your screen. Okay. Right. I let me give you an example. So let's say you take help of ChatGPT to write a cover letter, right? Yeah. So you ask a question like this, write me a cover letter. Uh, I'm applying for a job in a polymer manufacturing industry, right? You will definitely get an answer and you will get a very good answer. Okay. LLMs are good at that. But now reframe this question. I'm trying to apply for a job which is associated with the industry of polymer manufacturing. I have five years of experience in this industry. I have so-and-so expertise. I have worked on these and these projects. Okay, and I, I can, uh, my soft skills are this. And then you give this question to GP2. You will see a hundred times improvement in your response. It will be custom tailored for you, for your job. So in short, the better your questions, the better is the prompt, the better, the more the information that you give, the more the context that you give, the better the answer will be. Absolutely. So the answers you get from these models like chat GPT depends on the quality of questions you ask. So don't blame and, chat GPT always. <laughs> and this brings to one more thing because, you know, these with these AI models, right? they are performing exceedingly well. There is no doubt in that. So now we, as humans, we should we should try to ask better questions. Our focus should be on asking better questions. Mm. And then, then, of course, this is a very daunting question for humanity. <laughs> <laughs> if AI, and this is just the beginning, as we have discussed, it's not the end, it is just the start. 
will AI take away our jobs? So we will be less <laughs> in the next two three years. <laughs> Uh, that's a that's a very difficult question actually no one has a clear answer to it okay so let's understand it this way so you remember when computers came we thought uh, it is going to take all of our jobs because people were maintaining registers and writing with pen and everything was being done on paper but then computers came we adapted and everyone adapted nowadays we use only computers mostly mm-hmm. right then uh, then with the advent of internet things became better more technology more access to your hands more power to you and then the automation came right so with automation it made a huge impact on jobs already right oh yeah many things got automated <laughs> now with this advent of ai the scope of automation becomes very large Okay. 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 But before that, I want to touch one more thing. AI is a general purpose technology. Okay. What does that mean? Yes. So, what is a general purpose technology? So, think about steel, electricity, internet. It touches every area of your life. Okay. And AI is even bigger than that. right you use electricity for various purposes to charge your phone uh, to light your room multitude i i can i i think i will miss most of the examples we use anonymous like anonymous we don't even think about it right so generative ai is going to touch every area of your life and mm-hmm. that means it is applicable to every industry mm, okay yes makes sense and there is one more factor when internet came right it's also a general purpose technology it took time to evolve right mm. but what happened is for these technologies to work it required other technologies to work in conjunction right okay. all need to work together just like the browser has to become that much efficient you know your uh, programming languages the javascript evolved over time mm. browsers became better your processors became better right your network became better the internet speed became better so it took time to evolve but okay. with ai it is not the case oh. it is skyrocketing yeah yeah, yeah. in a year there has been tremendous changes there is a complete shift in the way you work mm. got it got it got it got it now i'm coming back to the question will it take the jobs so thing is that these machines generate or talk to you like humans yeah because of that it is also capturing areas which were earlier not susceptible for automation okay for example for example customer care oh yeah yeah yes 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 and and to your surprise even in india i am seeing people are using it a recent example there is a food company here food delivery company zomato it is using chat gpt as a customer service shala okay and one more example the tcs ceo they said that within one year all the customer service jobs will be completely wiped oh my god So the call centers are the first layer of impact. Okay, and what about software engineers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that everyone talks about, and they are also mostly impacted. But the thing is that it's not; it's never the case that it will completely take your job. But someone using AI will definitely take your job. Mm. Okay. so what you need to consider is train yourself know how to use these tools because these tools will help you know 10x 100x your productivity mm. that is why they say i think that uh, ai will not take your job as you said but a person who knows will your job because that person has an edge of speed and quality which you don't so absolutely then you might lose your job absolutely absolutely because these tools are so good it can help you like a task which used to take you like 4 hours will now take only one hour with with, with the help of these tools you become much more productive 
and you have time to do other things in your life. So Re- see it in a positive way. Okay. Yeah, but you cannot deny the fact. Yes, there will be shift. Uh, there will be a major shift. So get ready, prepare yourself, and how can you, how can you make yourself safe? Right. So there are few things that you can do. So always uh, get into a habit of learning. Always keep yourself updated with the new things. And the second thing is that you can either, you know, choose to completely shift to AI and work into the domain of AI. That is one choice. But there is one more other option, which is a better one. That in whatever field you are working as of now. Yeah. You learn to implement AI in that area. Okay. And then combine your existing expertise with that. Correct. Correct. And you will be uniquely positioned into your job. Wow. That's brilliant. So to the audience, you might be hearing this and you may feel, oh, you need to jump into AI. So jump into it, but you don't have to stay there 24 hours, which means you don't have to be an AI engineer, AI developer. If you are a finance expert, you don't have to do it. No, But you need to understand that Take help of AI to make your professional success better, to get better results. So if that is something which you do, if that is something that you are doing or you plan to do, then you are heading for success. If you don't do that, then yeah, things might get scary after some time. So please use this. And what I think uh, gradually it will happen in the schools no? from maybe hard fourth standard, you know, they will start teaching, you know, chat GPT, or maybe they are already teaching in some places. And then I have one last bonus question for you. But before that, uh, I would like to ask you one small question is, is AI dangerous to human beings, you know? So what do you think as this is progressing? Because power, as you know, is like a double-edged sword. It can, like the same knife, which can help a surgeon to do a surgery can if gone to the hand of a criminal or a murderer, that person can chop off uh, somebody. So what do you think? How do you see where is this evolving to? Okay, I will start with an example. So Babaji Ji, what you are talking about is known as artificial general intelligence. Okay, which is also known as AGI. Okay. So mean to say, what you're trying to say is one day... AI will be doing all the things that we humans do. Ah, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. But this definition of AGI is very ambiguous as of now. It's more of a philosophical question for the time being. So let me give you an example. There was like, I think five years back, there was a robot and they did a mirror test. So what is a mirror test? If a... If, uh, robot is able to identify, if the AI is able to identify by looking into mirror that it's me, it's able to, you know, uh, identify its, uh, identify itself, right? That means it's a human. <laughs> but it's very easy to make a machine to identify itself in a mirror. Mm. So either you are lowering the bar of human intelligence, what they can do, there is one possibility you can achieve artificial general intelligence. Okay. Okay. And the other aspect to this uh, this AGI is, we as humans, do we even know what consciousness is? Can we define consciousness? Because we as humans interact with the physical world, which is a very complex, which is very complex in its own nature. Yeah. Right? We do various things. We grab things. We put things. We 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 have desires to innovate. We have desires to get famous, and lot of things which you can't even imagine. There are few things which we think, but we never able to express. We have certain emotions which you can never express. Mm. All right. All right. The thing is that even the ones who are enlightened are unable to explain what consciousness is in terms of words, in terms of speech. Correct. They only say this can only be experienced. Correct, correct, correct. Cannot be taught, cannot be explained. This experience cannot be explained. Correct. So the only way 
to achieve artificial general intelligence is you have to you know you choose a a very simple definition of uh, what humans can do so uh, with this i will i will uh, make my final remarks for this question is that ai will do things that humans do mm-hmm. and it is already doing for example consider chat gpt yeah. it is doing many things which he will, it is doing even better than humans consider the example right. of reading right. the right. giving commands yes so yes technology is there but it is to assist us not to be worried but yes there is always harmful impact but people are working towards that we humans are uh, intelligent we always uh, are able to tackle various challenges of life and that's how the life evolves mm. great it was a fantastic discussion and i think for our audience there's one last bonus question which i want to ask is you are you are very much knowledgeable in ai and you are also aware of astrology so what do you think where can ai help astrology or astrologers or somebody seeking some astrological guidance so what do you think how could ai help there all right so are you scared baba ji ji <laughs> i have to be sound there <laughs> but there is a sign of relief but uh, before that uh, let me give in context so yes uh, you know ai can help in better predictions no. uh, how is that because it can it can analyze massive data sets of you know kind of birth charts or the patterns so if you give like uh, 10 years of data to uh, these kind of models these can bring you models which humans cannot see directly this can bring out those kind of patterns mm. second thing is that uh, as mostly the astrology depends on uh, uh the the universal patterns and uh, the positions the planetary positions and everything yeah. so it can read the massive data sets on the on that aspect also mm. and give you uh, analysis but the major ingredient which uh which the human astrologer brings to the table they need to understand that emotional the psychological condition of a human and then they talk to the person and then they predict then they give the predictions about all right all right all right so that human aspect cannot be replaced by ai mm all right human astrologers perspective are always valuable and are not going to go anywhere mm. but these tools are going to definitely aid you in the process and uh, you know help you better predict the outcomes mm. correct so so thereby we can make a kind of a conclusion here that those those professions where we need to have sympathy empathy and you know some love and some care and some concern and the output is not just dependent on numbers or delivering but there's the human aspect so those professions can uh, they, for them it is very imperative that they use for the calculation like you know astrology or mathematics or whatever even for medicine for doctors you no know, they do they take help of ai at the same time they need to understand that the human aspect will always be there because the astrologer the doctor will always be a human and the patient or the client will also always be human and that cannot be <laughs> yeah just one more thing i want to add and if you are fearful of ai there are many things which which will kill you faster than ai oh okay <laughs> consider an example you take uh, when you travel you take flights yeah right but you but you feel safe <laughs> that you always have a faith that uh, you will land to the destination yeah right? yes 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 <laughs> So Hamid ji thank you so much it was brilliant i think the i have been doing a lot of research on ai in the last one year especially but this this talk that we had it sums up so many things you know it, for a normal person who has no idea of this or who might have just heard about ai somewhere this this is this will be one of the most uh, interesting things for that person to hear and to get a overall gist of what is happening do you need to fear or what should you do to 
no stay ahead of the curve so as you said i think the conclusion is keep learning 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 and you don't have to learn like you know all seven days but what i tell people is whoever is scared of ai or ai taking their jobs as we discussed that ai will not take your job but a person who knows how to use ai in your domain will take your job maybe if you go progress so at least in a week if you can spare two hours which is not very difficult or maybe you know not even in the weekends but on friday evening you know, if you can spare or you know maybe somewhere any anywhere down the line saturday sunday so then if you just read two hours and you know you learn about different tools you know there is like make.com there is mind studio there are so many things which you can learn uh, where where you can not just in use ai but also integrate ai with different services that can actually help you and don't panic at the end understand that human interaction is here to stay it will not go anywhere and just keep learning keep upgrading and don't be fearful your focus should not be on the fear it should be on the process of learning and the more you learn the more you will understand because at the end everything will anyways plan out through destiny if your destiny your astrology your horoscope your dashas are good even if you hypothetically don't know any AI, you will still survive. Or maybe you will learn AI and you will be ahead of the curve. All right. So don't worry. Have trust in yourself and in God. And I'm sure you will do fine. All right. Thank you so much, Aminji. Uh, anything else you would like to say? <laughs> no, thank you. Thank you very much. And it was a great discussion. Uh, looking forward, Parvo. Thank you very much. Yes. And one last thing is anybody who wants to reach out to Aminji, you can do. I'll pin his uh, LinkedIn. He also has this page, which you have also already seen in the beginning, I guess. And all the links will be there in the description section and his email ID also. So please reach out to him if you want any personal mentoring or personal tutoring or you want to follow his content. Brilliant. And he also has a YouTube channel, which I saw recently. So please go and subscribe to the channel also. All right. Thank you so much. And please write down in the comments what what after this what would you like him to speak on then maybe god willing uh if we have many responses which i'm sure we will do we will uh, i will uh, personally send him another invite for these topics and maybe he will be here again to enlighten so, all right thank you so much please take care then thank you